Hey, what's good, fam? It's Kyle Henderson of BamaInsider.com coming to you on November 1st, 2020. Hope you're making some time for your family on this beautiful Sunday. Going to provide some observations on this video to talk about Alabama's 41-0 victory over Mississippi State. And I open with the defense. Getting the goose egg against Mississippi State. I think there was plenty to take away from this particular game. And one of the things that really stood out to me when I look at kind of the defensive stats overall, three freshmen really leading the way. Malachi Moore, eight tackles. Brian Branch, seven tackles. William Anderson with five tackles. I mean, this is the future of Alabama's defense. You also add players like Jordan Battle, Christian Harris. Those guys are sophomores. So really, I mean, there's so much youth on this defense, which I think is Fantastic when you look down the road at this Alabama defense. But, I mean, the play of Malachi Moore continues to be outstanding. We'll talk about more freshmen in just a minute. Um, Mississippi State had just one first down at halftime. That's like that's unbelievable, fam. And get this. They had just 30 yards at halftime as well. You know, the defense played inspired. And I think the defense came out with a chip on their shoulder. I mean, they. I mean, and rightfully so. I think a lot of people have been critical of Alabama's defense. And I think the defense came out and showed, look, we can play to the highest level. And getting the goose egg in the SEC in a game that everybody's watching on ESPN in a game where everybody's looking at the defense. Because I think we've seen that the offense can pretty much do what they want. But it's all going to be on the defense. And coming up with that big goose egg against a Mike Leach team. I mean, let's face it. Mike Leach is an offensive-minded coach. And for it to be 41-0, for, for Mississippi State to just have one first down at halftime, that speaks volumes. Only 200 yards in the game. That's ridiculous. In today's age of college football, Phil Mathis played unbelievable. Um, we'll talk more about the pass rush, which I thought was fantastic last night. Phil Mathis graded out 95 overall on Pro Football Focus. He had a pass rush grade of 93. Played lights out. Played inspired. Then Patrick Sartan with the house call to end the game is like the cherry on top. So the defense played fantastic. In fact, here's Devontae Smith talking about the defense and saying that the media, and kind of everybody else inspired this defense to play up to that level last night. I think y'all kind of made them mad. Just when everybody just outside just criticizing them, they kind of was feeding off of that, and they was like, okay, so y'all going to talk, we're going to show y'all. So I feel like just everybody just talking down about them just made them hungry just to do it. And I believed in it from the jump, and I knew that with everybody saying the things they say, y'all was just going to make them mad and just wake up a monster. All right, let's continue to talk about Alabama defeating Mississippi State and some observations. And we continue with the offense without Jalen Waddle. In my opinion, and let me know if you could agree in the comment box, the offense looked out of rhythm in that first half. I don't think Mac Jones played his best game. And even Nick Saban said that following the game during his press conference. I'll pipe in that in just a second. Um, but Smitty basically put the team on his back. Four touchdowns. I thought he dropped what could have been a touchdown. And 11 receptions. 203 yards. Yet he now has 56 receptions on the year with eight touchdowns. That's incredible. And think about it. I mean, if things really go well for Alabama, they could still play seven games. So how many receptions and touchdowns is Devontae Smith going to haul in this year? Unbelievable. As I said, Mac Jones, he didn't play his best game, but still good numbers. 24-31, 291 yards, four touchdowns. Najee Harris, 21 carries, 120 yards. Overall, Alabama had 499 yards of offense, 6-12 on third downs. Wasn't their, their best effort um, on third downs. And 3-4 for four inside the red zone on the season. Jones is 117 of 139 passing, 2,100 yards, 16 touchdowns, a percentage of 78.5. And his efficiency rating is unbelievable, 210.32. Here's Nick Saban talking about Mac Jones following the game. Um, you know, I, I think... You know, Mac made some good throws, made some big plays. Um, I also think that, you know, the way they played, they played a lot of soft zone, tried to take our, you know, deep routes away. And there were probably times in the game where, you know, we tried to tell them, you know, this may be a check down game at times. You can't force the deep throws. And, um, you know, the one, <clears throat> one could have been intercepted that, you know, they called or hit the ground. Um, but, you know, th this is a good defensive team, and um, I don't know, you can ask Mac, but he'd probably say this wasn't one of his best games, but uh, he played well enough for us to win and uh, score enough points to do that. And, um, you know, we, uh, I'm not disappointed in him at all. Uh, are there things that he could have done better? Uh, I think yes. Um, 
Did he linger on any mistakes that he made? Not at all, uh, which I think is a real positive sign. All right, let's talk about Alabama's pass rush. I thought this was the pass rush that we needed to see. We talked about it all week long. How would the pass rush fare against Mississippi State? Against Tennessee two weeks ago, zero sacks, one hurry. Against Mississippi State, two sacks, eight hurries. Chris Allen got his first sack of the season. Phil Mathis got his first sack of the season. And in total, as I just mentioned, eight quarterback pressures. Christian Barmore had two quarterback hurries. Mathis had one. Justin Abogbe had one. I'm telling you, the way that Phil Mathis played last night was inspiring. I mean, where has that been all season long? I've, I've always talked about Phil Mathis in a positive light, but to see how he played against Mississippi State, if you can, if you can combine that with Phil Mathis, Phil Mathis, Christian Barmore, and you can get Justin Abogbe, and I mean the young man of Tim Smith, who I thought also played fantastic with a lot of physicality. We'll talk about the freshman in just a second. I mean, that's your defensive line. That's kind of the Alabama defensive line that I think we're all accustomed to. A lot of physicality, getting to the quarterback, getting hands up. And check this out, fam. Last night, I don't know what's what's going on, but DJ Dell only played in two snaps. I don't know if he was injured or I don't know if he's kind of taking a back seat because you, you needed more defensive linemen to get off the quarterback. You know, Mississippi State wasn't going to run the ball in this game, and DJ Dell is more of a run stuffer, so maybe that, um, you know, contributed to that. I'm not sure. All right. I um, wanted to hit on DeMarco Hellams real quick. Three tackles and two bone-jarring hits. My goodness. And it was one right after another. I mean, DeMarco Hellams, we've talked about him, you know, being able to lay the wood, but what he did last night on two plays back-to-back, it was unbelievable the type of, you know, just physicality that the young man has. He's the true thumper in that group. Daniel Wright is your ball hawk. Uh, Jordan Battles kind of, you know, your very versatile safety. And DeMarco Hellams is going to lay the wood. And what he did last night in that second half was truly magical. Um, all right, here's a freshman report. You had Malachi Moore, 62 snaps, eight tackles. His pro football focus grade, 85.7. Unbelievable. Over the last two games, Malachi Moore has graded out as one of the top overall players on Alabama's team. Yeah, Brian Branch, 62 snaps, 7 tackles, pro football focus grade, 77.9. Brian Branch played his best game all season. I thought he could have had an interception. Probably he could have had a house call as well. Um, but, but he played fantastic. I, I really like to play a Brian Branch. He's a freshman who's getting a ton of time. And then William Anderson, 5 tackles, pro football focus grade of 71.4. Look, I get it. It seems like William Anderson is like so close to making a play every single play. He continues to improve and he can compl- He continues to play fast. Most importantly, um, a lot of people are asking about the quarterback Bryce Young. What to make of Bryce Young thus far? Right? Saw 11 snaps against Mississippi State. It was 0 for 2 with a fumble. He has two fumbles on the season. Eight of 15, 84 yards. He's been sacked three times uh, for 19 yards. And and as I mentioned, he has those two fumbles. Now look. He, he's played in limited snaps. And I said this last night during my call-in show after the game. I want to see a larger sample size of Bryce Young before we you know, can really understand w- where he is. I think we saw a lot of positives against Tennessee. That was the game where I really felt that he looked comfortable. He looked confident. Didn't see that um, against Mississippi State. But again, it's such a small sample size. Like, let's see him play an entire half. Let's see him play an entire game before we you know, really – you know, can make our decisions about what Bryce Young is going to bring. I think it's just going to take time. And, and Bryce, you know, the good thing about it is he is getting reps. So if he is called on to lead Alabama for for more than a quarter, for, you know, a game, who knows what's going to happen. Um, I, I think he's going to be ready, but I just, I want to see a larger sample size of Bryce Young. How about the play of Trey Sanders? We're talking about the freshman right here on Bama Insider. Um, Trey Sanders is a redshirt freshman. I thought he looked fantastic. 12 carries, 82 yards, a longest of 25 yards. This was, that was a Trey Sanders that we all wanted to see, right? Came out, ran hard. He has that second gear. He's a very, very talented back. And I think we all had a bad taste in our mouth from that Missouri game. Nine carries, one yard. And uh, we've seen him spot play some sometimes in between that. But last night, that was his breakout game. Poor young man had the touchdown taken away from him. Maybe he wasn't in the end zone, but you get what I'm saying. Um... Overall, great performance. 12 carries, 82 yards. Really, really liked what I saw from Trey Sanders. Um, Here's Nick Saban talking about Trey Sanders. Well, we have a lot of confidence in Trey. Uh, We think he's a really, really good player. Um, And I think it was good for him to get out there and uh, have some real positive runs, make some really good cuts, um, and have uh, 
you know, a really positive night from my standpoint. Um, and I think that will help his confidence. And I think that uh, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about when I say we need more guys to be able to, you know, step up and have roles on the team. So, um, you know, B-Rob was a little nicked up tonight. So we were just kind of playing him on third down, trying to get him through the game and just spot play him. So uh, Trey did a nice job of filling in and uh, was, you know, had a very positive performance. All right, let's talk about Tim Smith. Freshman defensive tackle at Alabama. We've all been waiting to see Tim Smith get on the field. Um, we've seen him uh, play a little bit more and more last night, 12 snaps. And the 12 snaps he played in, he was physical. A lot of physicality from him. Uh, picked up a player from Mississippi State and just smashed him to the ground. Yeah, he was called uh, for a penalty late in the game. And Nick Saban was ripping him, right? There was like five seconds left. Alabama's up 41-0. And you would think, you know, Nick Saban might be smiling on his birthday. No, he's about perfection. And he was riding on Tim Smith. Uh, but we did get to see some of him play. And I thought he played very physical. I didn't know he was that type of player in terms of the physicality. So uh, I want to see more Tim Smith. Absolutely. I mean, think about it. Tim Smith, Christian Barmore, Phil Mathis. I mean, Alabama has the, the lineman to get after the quarterback. Justin Abogbe out in there. Um, DJ Dale when you have to stop teams that run. Javon Baker. Where is Javon Baker, right? You, you guys are asking yourselves. And you and I think a lot of people coming into this week just felt that because Jalen Waddle's out, now you go to Javon Baker. Well, you know, Slade Bolden is a slot. And I told people on Bama Insider, look, Javon Baker is not going to play as much as you think. If he does, it might be on the outside. It might be at slot. But he's a player. He's he's a receiver who's who's versatile. But the team, but in this schematics under Steve Sarkeesian, Slade Bolden is your perfect slot receiver. Okay? Um, so I'm not sure how much Javon Baker is going to play. I would like to see him play. I think he has all the talent in the world. I think he's going to be the next guy who is continues that lineage here at Alabama. But in terms of him, like just jumping over Slade Bolden, just because I don't think that's going to happen. Dow Jones Bell, six snaps last night. Um, Treshawn Holden, 11 snaps. Those are two other freshman wide receivers. Um, Jamil Burroughs got six snaps. He's a, a defensive lineman. And then uh, you also had um, uh, Jamarian Latham get in. Uh, for three snaps, and then Javon Cohen got in six snaps at the tackle position. So that's kind of your freshman report. All right, let's talk about the special teams. Will Reichard, two of two on field goals. He had a field goal from 40 yards and from 24 yards. He was five of five on PATs. Kid is, I mean, look, I, we're not going to jinx him, but let's just talk about the stats, right? Right now, he is playing at a very high level. He hasn't missed a PAT. He's been automatic on those. And same with field goals. Look, I don't know if the kid's going to be perfect throughout the year. It's hard for kickers to do that. But the point is, Will Reichert is a very confident kicker. And I think as Alabama fans watch the special teams, they have a lot of confidence in Will Reichert. So he's continuing to play at a very high level. And I think that's exciting because that's been one component that Alabama has been missing for several years. Um, Charlie Scott, the brother of J.K. Scott, four punts for 152 yards, average of 38 yards, longest of 46, um, one inside the 20. I think the special teams, and for the, in terms of punting, it needs to improve. Um, if Alabama needs to flip the field against anyone, it's probably not going to happen. Um, but Charlie Scott, you know, he, he's getting an opportunity right now. Where is Ty Perrine? I know you're asking. No idea. I mean, he was at practices last week. I'm not sure why he's not getting onto the field. Maybe he'll get an opportunity as we move forward. Kind of questions um, going forward. And these two questions are about two defense alignment. LeBron Ray, he's still out. Um, not sure how long he's going to be out. And what role is he going to play when he gets back? Right? Because I think there's starting to be some guys on the defensive line that are really starting to stand out. Same with DJ Dell. Only played in two snaps. Maybe the thought process is DJ Dell will play more against teams that run the ball. And, you know, you kind of sub in some guys who can get after the quarterback when you play a passing team. Only two snaps last night against Mississippi State. I don't think he's injured. So it's uh, it's interesting to look at it from a snap count perspective. Uh, injuries, Jalen Waddle, as you know, out. Nick Saban continues to say he's going to be out the, the entire season. Um, Miller Forrestal, the, his entire body weight down went down on his shoulder. I think he's going to be okay. I mean, the kid gets hurt every single game. But, I mean, these aren't, you know, these aren't just injuries to the, the normal person. I mean, the, the impact that this young man is delivering – on a week-to-week -week basis, and he's he's going to come back. He's going to be fine. He's a big dude, but um, fell entirely on his shoulder. Marcus Banks, uh, Nick Saban said he had a hamstring, so I think he's going to be okay. LeBron Ray, as I just mentioned, looked like an elbow. Ronald Williams back after suffering a fractured arm during fall training camp. 
Um, saw him on the sidelines. I think he got one snap. Still has a cast on his arm. And um, as we kind of look at Alabama's remaining schedule, um, what's your what's your take, fam? I mean, Alabama goes into um, you know this part of the season, and they have a bye week right now. And I think it comes at a perfect time. You know, the, the team, yes, they have some injuries, but nothing too significant. I think this is a perfect time to kind of heal up those nicks and bruises and get ready for a game against LSU on November 14th. That's a redemption game, right? Going into Baton Rouge, the last time Alabama was there, they shut out LSU, and then LSU came to Bryant-Denny last year and, and beat a very talented Alabama team Then ended up winning the national championship. We saw them play against Auburn, um, and they looked they looked terrible, to be quite honest. But, you know, it's a, it's a rivalry game. And it's a redemption game. So 6 o'clock on CBS, and that will be on November 14th. After that, Alabama will take on Kentucky. That'll be at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Uh, Kentucky just lost to Georgia 14-3. Not really sure what to make of Kentucky. Looks like they have a pretty good defense, but, um, I mean, it's going to be really hard for them to stop Alabama's offense. Auburn, that's the game that I think now we have all circled, or at least I have. We, I mean, it's always circled. It, but I think at the beginning of the season, you're like, ah, you know, Auburn's kind of, you know, falling off, whatever. But, I mean, the way Auburn played against LSU, and I get it, LSU train wreck. But Auburn, their defense, they look ferocious. Not as ferocious as as, as a year ago. The same thing. I mean, you, you've seen it time and time again. I mean, it's like throw the win- the records out the window because Gus Malzahn is an evil genius when he plays Nick Saban. He's almost been kind of Nick Saban's kryptonite, right? So that game's on November 28th. And then on Saturday, December 5th, Alabama will travel to Fayetteville, Arkansas uh, to take on the Razorbacks and an improved Arkansas team under Sam Pittman, okay? The SEC championship, if Alabama is to win out, they will take on the winner of the East, Georgia, Florida. Those two teams play uh, this coming weekend. The SEC championship is scheduled for December 19th. Let me know your thoughts about Alabama's remaining schedule in the comment box. Hey, fam, look, I would really appreciate the likes. I mean, I, I, if we can get 500 likes on this video, I'd sincerely appreciate it. We put a ton of work into BamaInsider.com, and a lot of our videos, we like, you know, we put so much into them. It's like 200 likes, 100 likes. Look, if you want us to continue to grow as a business, we need you to hit that like button, all right? We, we need you to support the channel. Um, this is what we do for a living. This is how we put food on the table. So definitely hit the like button. Definitely subscribe, and um, you know we'll catch you soon next time right here on BamaInsider.com. Have a beautiful Sunday with your family, and we'll catch you soon back at BamaInsider.com.